Welcome to Asian Culture Vulture. I'm Suman Butcher, and today I'm going to be talking to modern color theorist Mumtaz Begum Hussain about her new book, Hello Rainbow, Finding Happiness in Color. Welcome to Asian Culture Vulture, Mumtaz. Thank you so much, and congratulations on your book. As you can see, I've made a bit of an effort to be <laughs> colourful, to bring some joy and positivity to this conversation. Where are we? This lovely corner. So we're at an exhibition called Castle Chromatic House of Charismatic Colours. And this is an art exhibition that's on at St Pancras Hospital in oh. North London. And the whole exhibition is a celebration of colour. It actually involves 33 artists who've got together to create the different parts of a colourful house. So this is actually Cathy Keith's conservatory. Uh, lots of different details in there. And as you walk through the exhibition, you actually come across different parts of the home. So there's a kitchen, there's a bathroom, there's a dressing area. And um, I'm actually one of the 33 artists who've actually contributed to this exhibition as well. Okay, so come on Mumtaz, I think it's time we had a look at your room basically in this exhibition. <laughs> Is this part of it, this outside it bit? It starts here, follow okay. your art into the craft room. So I've created what I'm calling a fantasy craft room. Okay. Um, I've always been a maker designer. Um, you know, I grew up from a Bangladeshi household. My mum had her sewing machine. You know, she had her room where she did her sewing. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted a space to make things, but I've never had it living in various London flats because there's never a space to have a craft room. So I thought, this is my opportunity to make my dream space. So for me, having a place where I can do my sewing, creative stuff, hobbies, arts, this is the kind of space I would like to be in. So I actually created this using new pieces of work I've made for the exhibition and also some pieces that I've created over time as well. Great, it looks lovely. So I want to ask you, like, where did this love for colour begin? You know, like as children, we're always drawing with crayons and stuff, you know. I mean, tell me a bit about <laughs> your own personal journey mm. into colour. It's really interesting because a lot of people say to me, when did you first decide you liked colour? Mm -hmm. And there was never a moment. I generally think I was actually born colourful with an appreciation of colour. Um, and I've always been a crafter, so I've always made things. Like I was that child that made things from a washing up liquid bottle or an egg box and always very kind of DIY inclined. And this sort of creative process and the artistic side of actually doing things, I think probably exposed me to more color than the average person. Um, I've got two really clear memories from being a child which involved colour. So I was very sort of perceptive to colour from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't just stay as a passion or an interest. I actually decided I wanted to make colour my career. So that's kind of taken me through to where I am today. We have such different personal associations with colour and it really changes over time. Mm -hmm. And when I was about four or five years old, I had these really vivid memories of nightmares involving the color yellow. And for a really long time, I despised the color yellow because it just gave me these bad memories. But then over time, that's completely changed. And what I've learned and sort of experienced about color is that all of us get attracted to colors at different times of our life and we need them at different times. And I started to need the brightness and the vibrancy and the joy and sunshine of yellow when I was an adult. And all of a sudden, when I realized the positive side of yellow, all those bad memories went away. And it's really interesting. A lot of the everyday decisions we make are actually based on color. We might not realize it. So for example, like how milky do you like your tea? Most people can look at a tea and think, oh, it's a bit too light or it's a bit too dark. And that's actually a decision based on color. Or you might sort of wake up and look out the window. If it's a blue sky, you might get up straight away. If it's a gray sky, 
you might decide to stay in bed a bit longer. So actually we take it for granted, but colour is everywhere, all around us, and it's affecting us at all times. So, Hello Rainbow, Finding Happiness in Colour. Let's talk about your philosophy, the Hello Hue or the yep. Rainbow philosophy. I mean, do you want to tell us a bit mm. about that? So I've created my own modern colour philosophy. It's called Hello Hue and it's my seven point manifesto. So seven ways for how you can actually encourage and incorporate more colour into your life. And one of the reasons I did this is because I'm such a colour lover and over the years I've just learned about so many different colour philosophies and theories and I started to feel that everything I was reading was written by men. We're talking in the 18th, 19th century. A lot of the colour theories that people like Sir Isaac Newton were talking about, um, lots of European white men were making decisions about colour that we still view today. For example, he actually invented the seven colours of the rainbow and he invented the colour wheel. And the colour wheel is the colour rules that continue to define different ways we see colour. So a colour wheel will tell you that certain colours which are opposite each other look good together. And so if you see and you're told on a diagram, this is how colour should look and work, it's very structured and very rigid. And for me, I don't really like rules. I prefer a much more thoughtful, I guess you could say feminine approach to colour. And so I decided to look at colour from more of an emotional perspective. It's not about the rigid rules. It's not about saying to someone, oh, your skin tone should actually match wearing yellow or you're too light to wear yellow or those kind of rules I don't really prescribe to them. I think that we should all use our intuition to be guided to colour and to actually realise that colour is giving us all these energies and vibes that can really uplift our spirits. So my philosophy that I've created is all about this joyful side of colour, how we can use colour for our well-being, and it's very different to the existing colour theories. We do talk about colours having kind of moods and feelings, you know, um, feeling blue or being caught red-handed or things like that, you know, is, is there some truth in that? Absolutely, and it's like, you know, green with envy, or, you know, you're just seeing red, or you're feeling in the pink. It's really interesting, because colours definitely have these natural reactions. And that's the thing, it's actually observing that these things do happen. Um, yellow is the colour of the sun, and the ancient Egyptians recognised that they really revered the colour sun. They revered um, the sun, they actually built colour temples, because they could see this was such an incredible spiritual energy. But I feel like we use those sayings, but we don't actually think about the meaning of them. And when we do start to, we actually realise colour does affect us. It can completely change how we feel, it can change how we think. And when we start to explore that, we can learn so much about ourselves. So what's your favourite colour? <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where as a child we're always asking our friends oh what's your favorite color i guess a lot of people in playgrounds children in playgrounds make friendships that way and as adults we never ask each other what's your favorite color but we can learn a lot from someone's favorite color the reason is that we are drawn to different colors at different times of our life and so for me the colour that's my favourite colour this year is very different to my favourite colour last year. So I'm really kind of drawn to quite aqua, turquoise, aquamarine type colours. When we were in right in the middle of the pandemic, green, I was really joined, drawn to green. And actually for most of 2020 I had green hair because green is a colour that makes me feel relaxed and balanced and so I was drawn to green, I wanted lots of green energy and I had green hair then. But you know, some years ago, if you saw me in the street, I would have had bright red hair. And bright red hair is very much this outgoing colour, this loud colour, it's getting attention. But to be honest, when I was in my 20s, I wanted loads of attention. So I had this vibrant red hair. But right now, I don't want red hair. I've completely moved on from that person. So 
for now, I'm much more drawn to cooler, calming colours. But I wouldn't be surprised if you asked me in a year's time, I'm drawn to something else. And I think at the beginning of the book, I've asked people to write down their favourite colour. And as they go through the journey and learn about different aspects of colour, I then ask them again at the end, what's your favourite colour now? And I think that most people would have changed once they've explored and experienced colour a bit more. When we're children, we grow up with being much more open to colour, as I said, mm. through drawing and other things. But as we get older, we become a bit more conservative, let's say, in our colour choices. Most people do, but mm. not everybody. But then, I mean, do you think people are afraid of colour? And why, why do you think that yeah. is, you know? I think in Britain in particular, there's this real fear of colour, which is actually called chromophobia. It is actually a thing. And one of the ways this has actually happened is actually the kind of corporate roles that happen in terms of work and when you're a child you, you, you have no fears about colour, you use everything but when you start going to school you get all of these uniform rules, you can wear this and you can't wear that and then that starts being elevated as you start going for job interviews or you start going for work and all of a sudden these rules are in place and we can no longer express ourselves. Similarly, in the home, one thing that really kind of frustrates me is there's such a focus on we shouldn't colour our homes in case we decide to sell it. And if we sell it, no one's going to buy our home unless it's completely neutral and beige. And so people live in this constant feeling of, I can't show any personality just in case. And I think we need to move away from this just in case idea and actually live in the moment be surrounded by things that we love and bring us joy. And you can sort of pick any non-Western country and you'll probably find there is much more colour and it just seems to be something over here that we have just seemed to have pushed away. I feel like people sometimes think you're a bit um, crazy, let's say, that if you're being yeah. very, very vibrant and colourful that, you know, like, whatever. But yeah. but from, from the point of view of Hello Rainbow and some philosophy that we can mm -hmm. take away into our everyday lives, you know, yeah. do you want to tell us how we can bring joy and positivity mm -hmm. into our life through colour? Maybe not go as wild as <laughs> this sure. craft room is, but you know, something, yeah. everyday things, how can we Absolutely. do that? Absolutely. You know, being an appreciator and lover of colour is not about walking around like a kaleidoscope. You do not need to dye your hair or dress colourfully. I love doing those things, but that is not the only way to enjoy colour. I would say start with nature, getting outside and going for a walk. Next time you go for a walk, focus on the colours. Going for something like a walk at sunset is amazing. You know, the sunsets in the UK are unlike sunsets anywhere else. We have so many clouds, therefore we have so many incredible colours. You may even notice on social media, on a day there's a beautiful sunset, everyone gets their cameras out and they share them. But have a look, be outside. Look at those orange rays, look at how it turns to purple, look at when the pink comes in. Just stopping and being mindful and observing the colours at play, that's when you can really start to feel the benefits. And if you're walking in a park, looking at a leaf, you know, you might think, all oh, these flowers are pretty, these trees are beautiful. But did you know the human eye can see more shades of the colour green than any other colour? So if you were to pick up any leaf and actually stop and look at it, you can start to see, gosh, there's not just light green here, there's dark green here, there's all different shades. And it's just those moments of actually stopping, acknowledging and appreciating. And that is a simple, that's probably the heart of my philosophy, is to take time to do that and you'll really start to see the benefits. That's great, Mumtaz. Thank you so much for talking to Asian Culture Vulture. Thank you so much. Thank you, Simon.